Hello and welcome back. In this part, we're going to study ownership in Rust. First, let's understand why ownership exists and the problems it has solved. As you know, there are a number of programming languages that let you control the memory like C and C++. They allow you to reserve a part of the memory and when you finish using this part of memory, it lets you release or free this part of memory. The problem with this system that it creates bugs because you might have freed the memory more than once or you even forgot to free that chunk of memory. This is of course for the languages that let you totally control the memory. Now this issue was solved by some programming languages by introducing the garbage collector. Now the garbage collector has a role of reserving the data in the memory and then once the programmer is done dealing with this data, the garbage collector releases this part of memory. Now this operation is done at the runtime in the background and this is one of the main drawbacks of garbage collection. If it wants to clean up the memory, it will stop the program. And by the way, that is the freezing which happens for a few seconds in your program. So blame it on the garbage collector as it stops the program to clean up the memory. And when it's done cleaning, the program resumes working. So this actually has created a slow performance and inefficient outcome not recommended for those applications that need powerful memory resources. Now let us see how Rust has solved this issue by a new concept called ownership. And by the way, last month the White House issued um, 16 pages on cybersecurity. And as you can see here, it says that the White House's Office of the National Cyber Director urges developers to move to memory safe languages such as Rust as soon as possible. We have known for ages that we should use memory safe languages like Rust, but after lifetimes of deploying everything in C and C++, it's not easy to do so. So you can see that even the White House recommends you using Rust for memory safety. Okay, this issue is 19 pages actually, back to the building blocks, a path towards secure and measurable software. And um, you can see that's February 2024. And um, let's search for the word Rust here. So take a look at that. According to experts, both memory safe and memory unsafe programming languages meet these requirements. At this time, the most widely used languages that meet all three properties are C and C++, which are not memory safe programming languages. Rust, one example of a memory safe programming language, has the three requisite properties above, what has not yet been proven in space systems. So as you can see, the Rust programming language is going to be very popular in the future. And um, I can tell you that the average salary for Rust programmer in the United States is around $120,000 a year. Now in Rust, every value has a single owner and there can only be one owner at a time. Actually, ownership rules help manage memory efficiently and prevent common bugs. And as we're talking about ownership, we will have to talk about borrowing and references. So borrowing in a nutshell allows you to temporally borrow references to values. And this actually enables safe concurrent access without sacrificing the memory safety. And I'm going to explain that in details. Now, there are very important three rules of ownership. And these rules actually are defined here in the Rust book. And the book recommends to keep these rules in mind. You don't have to know them by heart, but it's good to keep them in a corner of your mind. So the first rule is each value in Rust has an owner. Second, there can only be one owner at a time. Third, when the owner goes out of scope, the value will be dropped. So you will need to be aware of those rules. Otherwise, the Rust compiler is going to jump in your face, yell at you, telling you that you have violated one of those rules. Now let me give you three examples on the three rules so you will understand better. So let's take an example on the first rule, which says that each value in Rust has a variable that it's its owner. Okay, let me first create the main function. And inside the main function, I want, um, I want to declare a variable S1. And this S1 is going to be a string uh, from, and we're saying here Rust, for example, for simplicity. Okay, so S1 is the owner of that string. The Rust value only is owned by the S1 owner. Okay, I hope this is clear. If I will create a function that will calculate the length of that string, and this function takes S, 
and this s is the input, right? The string. But it's not going to be the value of that string. It's going to be simply a reference to that string. So any reference is going to be uh, preceded by this ampersand sign or the end sign. So the input in this case is not going to be a string, but a reference to the string. And it's going to result in u size or unsigned size. And we want here the s dot len. Now let's go ahead and uh, declare another variable that's going to be the length. And we're going to invoke the calculate length function. And we're going to pass and be careful. I'm not going to pass s1. Okay, I'm not going to pass the owner, I'm going to pass a reference to that owner. Okay, so this is a reference. Okay, reference to that string. So it actually borrowed the S1 by this reference and S1. So that's the reference and that's the original owner. All right, now let's print. Let's do print ln and we will pass S1 and the length of the S1 by passing the reference of S1. And that's uh, exclamation mark. Okay, let's run that. Let's see uh, if we'll do cargo run compiling and the length of Rust is four. So actually Rust has accessed the strings data without taking the ownership. The ownership of the string remains with the S1. The next rule says that there can be only one owner at a time. And now I want to give the ownership of the string to another variable. I'm going to call it S2. So I'm going to say S2 is equal to S1. One. So what we have done here is that we have actually transferred the ownership of that string in S1 to a new variable called S2. Let me show you if we will do print ln um, and we'll do S1. Let's see what will happen. Here we have an error because S1 no longer owns the string. It now belongs to S2. So let me just do like this and let's run for S2 and it will compile normally and it will print trust. So this is the second rule. There only can be one owner at a time. Now let me comment all of this out again and let's do the last rule which says that when the owner goes out of scope the value will be dropped. And let me give you another example. Let's do F main. And um, again, let's do S1 is equal to string from and again, let's do Rust. And now I want to show you if uh, let's just bring this here, this calculate um, function. And let's again declare this length variable, calculate length, and we'll pass here reference to S1 variable. And we're going to do print ln and then here we will do s1 and len but what i want to tell you is that the s1 outside of this scope will be dropped out of memory okay so s1 goes out of scope and the value will be dropped once outside of the scope block out of scope and if i will create a function called print lost and i will pass s which is a reference to the string and if I will try to print the reference to S1, let me show you what will happen. You will find here that cannot find value S1 in the scope. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next lesson with borrowing and references.